right, so what we have out here for the CS Beef is uh, two large Xerxes tanks. Uh, these tanks total 60,000 gallons. Uh, the first primary tank over here is a 30,000 gallon two compartment primary tank. This is just for primary settling and accepts raw sewage from the lift station back over at the CSB facility from all of the restroom, restrooms and uh, employee wash down stations over there. After we start to treat all of that raw sewage through the first primary tank, we come over here to what we call a pre anoxic tank. And this is another 30,000 gallon two compartment Xerxes tank where we're taking a, uh, a blend of the primary effluent after we've gone through quite a bit of primary uh, sedimentation and we have uh, started to get a defined clear zone and we still have a pretty high BOD concentration as we come into this tank and we actually are returning some of our recirc blend into here to aid in the denitrification process. So we blend through this tank where we hit the end where we have a pair of uh, 15 inch effluent filters to filter out any additional TSS a slight BOD reduction prior to going over to the AX Max treatment system. Now what you see out here are four 42 foot AX Max treatment units. Each unit contains 300 square feet of textile for a total of 1200 square feet of textile media. Now the first two units that you see the furthest away from me those are what we call our recirc blend units. And what we have is our primary tank effluent, and again we've blended it through this pre anoxic process, flows over to that very first tank. And the bottom portion underneath the sheets in these units is all of our recirc blend tankage. And so we continue to blend our primary effluent over with a treated effluent, and it makes its way over here. So you can see right here what we have are four. 145 gallon a minute research pumps and each pump is designated to an individual 42 foot unit. So our control panels that we talked about inside the building queue up these pumps to run you know on a time cycle all day and all night. Typically we run them about a minute and a half on and right now the setting for this particular facility is about six minutes off and we just rotate through each pump. This set of pumps over here is critical to that pre anoxic process I was talking about. These two pumps pump effluent that's a blend, highly nitrified, through the control building where it picks up alkalinity and possibly carbon and then we send it back up into this pre anoxic tank. After we've gone through and we've continued to recirculate over the top of the textile, we're also recirculating over the top of the second two AX Max units. The second two AX Max units are what we call our dose blend. And as we begin to treat over those units, we start to achieve a really great BOD, TSS, and even a lot of denitrification and removal. And we come to this, which is our AX Max dose tank. And the AX Max dose tank. It's pretty straightforward. We have a pair of 75 gallon a minute horse and a half pumps. We have the floats here. And as this chamber begins to fill up, as we begin to treat through the process, it triggers an, a dose which activates these two pumps. Now the critical piece here on the CS Beef project is we have a 19 total nitrogen limit. We're anticipating a high TKN coming in from the facility since it's mainly restroom waste. So what we have to do is even though we're going to get about 60 to 70 percent total denitrification out here through this process, we need to have a little bit of extra help on the very tail end. So these two pumps actually pump up through the building. They're going to pick up a carbon which is probably going to be micro C. We're going to add that into the pressure line and then we're going to dose over to this tank here. What we have right here underneath my feet is a 20,000 gallon single compartment Xerxes tank. And as I said earlier, we've got the dose pumps back here. They're pumping through our control building and those peristaltic pumps I talked about earlier are gonna inject carbon into that pressure line so that through this post anoxic reactor, the carbon will react with the remaining nitrate 
allowing us to achieve that 19 total nitrogen compliance limit. As we move through the tank, we get to see that denitrification until ultimately we end here. And right underneath my feet is again a pair of 75 gallon a minute horse and a half pumps that are gonna send our treated, final treated effluent all the way down to the large soil absorption system that you'll probably see later. All right, so we're out here at the uh, CS Beef Drain Field site. Uh, this system was designed and constructed in four modules per the uh, Idaho State ADAPA code for large soil absorption systems. Each individual module is, is approximately or slightly more than 20,000 square feet, so we've got about 80,000 square feet of actual field. These fields are constructed of as beds uh, using infiltrator drain field product the quick four standard units and each lateral is pressurized with a one inch pipe going down the lateral we're using 16th inch orifices so each zone is is dosed with one individual pump so we've got four pumps in a dose tank just behind the cameraman there pump one doses field one and all four pumps alternate so it'd go pump one pump two pump three and pump four and then it'd recycle back to pump one to dose field one the pumps themselves are uh, Franklin Electric Motors 5 horsepower coupled to uh, 300 gallon per minute Grunfoss pump ends. And so we're basically shooting about 300 gallons a minute, slightly less than that, out to each field at each dose. And so what we've got out here is a, an Arenko built control panel. This control panel is much like the other control panels that we've uh, seen on this project. It handles the, the alternation of the pumps. It also monitors pump amperage, um, obviously high and low level conditions in the tank, in the dose tank, and we have a 20,000 gallon Xerxes dose tank here that the pumps are, pump, that our, that our pumps are installed in. Uh, the panel itself also has uh, Rinko's new cell monitoring system, so basically it establishes its own uh, IP address, and so the operator or anyone who's looking to get into the panel to access the panel to possibly aid the operator in operation maintenance can dial in or actually access it through a website. So any any web browser, your iPhone, your Android, your laptop, you can go straight into the unit by typing in an IP address in a web browser. You can log into the system, pull it up, help the operator with any problems they have. Of course, it will report alarms and alerts or, or mainly alarms to the operator himself through texting, and so he'll get a, a, say you have a high level alarm, he'll get a high level alarm alert on his phone and then he can come out here or log into the panel and, and address the problem. Uh, as far as the field goes, back to that, we have about 6,500 infiltrator dome chambers on this field. This field took about three months to construct and they had 10 guys out here, they had a Connex trailer with a jig so they could they could drill all the laterals to the, the appropriate length and get them all to match up as they put them in underneath the infiltrator dome chambers. Uh, Iron Horse Excavation was the excavator that put this in. As I understand it right now, this is one of the biggest drain fields, at least in this area in Idaho and possibly in the entire state. It's a pretty good sized drain field. And so we're pretty pretty proud of this project. It's been, uh, been a lot of work uh, starting all the way from conception to today when we finaled the well we finaled the drain field yesterday through the health district but we uh, made some final settings and some of the controls and got everything working on the treatment side so that's pretty much the end of this project uh, really enjoyed it uh, had a 
had a pretty pretty good time coming down here. Some of it was a little cold and some of it was a little bit difficult, but uh, for the most part, good people down here to work with and really happy with the way it came out.